चलो आंध्रा ब्रेकफास्ट टाइम I'm told you have a very light breakfast. You're not one of those guys who has a big breakfast. You've got a long day ahead. You're try crisscrossing uh, the heat of Andhra Pradesh. So how do you keep yourself going if you don't have a big breakfast? Have a light eater. Light eater. Because I've been told that you you like protein shake and. <laughs> You stay fit. Thank you. You travel. You walk what? Three thousand six hundred kilometers yeah. over thirteen months. Three thousand six hundred kilometers to be precise. So how did you do that? If you're not, I mean, if you're going to eat a very light breakfast, make me do all the eating. Good old Uma. Huh? Yeah. No, sir. Thank. But what about him? I also have. So this is a great chutney that you're having. Coriander. Mm. Tell me about the present government. How is uh, how is this? What is this election about? You know, is it about you now? This time, your main target is Chandra Babu Naidu. In two thousand and nine, I sensed it was the Congress Party. You wanted to, in a sense, prove yourself to them. Now, is it to take on Chandra Babu Naidu? Is he your enemy number one? Fact is, I think there's uh, so many. See, there's always politics that I see. There's no enemy of mine. There's no Congress as an enemy. There's no fellow TDP as an enemy. See, we're here for a cause. We're here to serve people. And uh, people do have faith in us. And if people do give us a chance, God's grace, that's true. Then it's a it's an opportunity that history gives to do something that history would never. You keep saying God's grace. You know you are a very devout person. You know for your entire family. I knew your father. He was also a very devout person. But elections are not won on God's grace. They are won by the battle on the ground. Is this about you versus Chandra Babu? Let me ask you. I mean, don't call them the enemy, but it is. It is a contest between the two of you at the end of the day. Uh, yes, probably in our state, we are the two regional players who are dominating the scene, and uh, the rest lot of anti incumbency on him. What uh, and also there is a strong sense of hope in me, and I think this would be a battle on that count, anti incumbency versus hope. So you say you are representing hope. Uh, there are those who say that you are also, in a way, planning to tie up with the BJP after the election. This question has been asked. Chandra Babu Naidu makes the accusation he is fighting the BJP over special status for Andhra, and Jagan Mohan Reddy is planning on a deal with Narendra Modi and the BJP after the election. Clarified once and for all. Basically, the fact is. As far as we are concerned, we have no tie up with anybody. Be it Congress, be it uh, uh, Napkin, just tell me. Yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, we have no, uh, we have no tie up with anybody. Be it uh, Congress or be it BJP or be it anybody, basically. So our objective is very specific. Whosoever gives special categories to us, we support that. The reason being, so, the reason being, see, this special category status was promised to us before bifurcation. It's a precondition for bifurcation. This is probably the first time in history that a state demanding bifurcation took the capital of it. First time it's all happened in the history of this country. And the state demanding by education took the capital also with them. And now that the Hyderabad has gone, you know, anybody whomsoever completes his education in our state has got no place to go for the job. You're either competing with Bangalore, either you're competing with China, either you're competing with Hyderabad. And what 
such care, all these places have become what they are over 60 year period. And today, there is no place for our kids to go. You have a degree completed, you have somebody who's done an engineering degree, you have somebody who's done uh, EC, electronic communications, or IT degree, or anything basically. See, what special category status does is, only special category states have got these special industry incentives, like 100% income tax exemption, like 100% GST exemption. Only when these kind of things are given to us, you would attract hospitals, you would attract uh, uh, hotels, you would attract uh, uh, IT schools, you would attract uh, other, just other factories and stuff like that. What, see, see otherwise, if Bangalore also gives the same kind of uh, normal industry centers, Hyderabad also gives normal kind of industry centers. What additionally can you give to attract investment into the state? But, but Rahul Gandhi is saying that whoever comes to, he will give, if he comes to par in Delhi, mm -hmm. he will give special status within a week of his government coming to par. So he is saying, I'll give it to you. So are, are you ready to support a Rahul Gandhi after all that happened in 2009? See, see, my personal grievance has got nothing to do with my state. My state is that most important state. Most, my state is the top most priority for me. See, as far as our support is concerned, we are sick and tired of trusting people. See, we trusted Congress party. And then what did Congress do? Against our wishes, they broke the state. And what else did they do? It went one step ahead, broke our state against our wishes, and it did not incorporate the demand for special category status in the AP Reorganization Act. Had they incorporated this special category status demand as well into the AP Reorganization Act, we could have gone to the Supreme Court. But then where does that, you are saying you can't trust the Congress the party? Let me just complete that. Yes. So, so basically, Congress betrayed us mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. And then BJP, is, BJP did exactly the same. Big Chandra Babu No, no. BJP, what BJP did was, BJP on the floor of the parliament, on the floor, on the floor of the house, they accord with the Congress party. They supported the bifurcation. And they, in the parliament, also spoke and said that they would not only do special category status for five years, but would extend it by another five years, that is 10 years. Mm -hmm. Then they incorporated that in their manifesto as well. Then Narendra Modi himself, when he was touring Andhra Pradesh in Tirupati, mm -hmm. just at the foothills of Lord Venkateshwara, Narendra Modi himself promised that one voted to power, special category status will be given to Andhra Pradesh state. And after that, being in a position that he is, he also backstabbers. So in a way, Congress backstabbers, so did the BJP. So both these parties have backstabbed. So, so what I am proposing is, we are sick and tired of trusting people. We don't want to trust anybody. We say, we will have God willing, God's grace, touch wood, we will have the entire 25 MPs in our in our court. Mm -hmm. And then we will say, you sign, I will support you. So you are saying post-election, you are telling both the Congress and the BJP or anybody or whoever else. comes to power. Including Rajiv said this, I, I won't come to power. Whoever comes to power, I will you sign the special status document. And there with you. And there with you. So it's not about ideology in terms of Congress versus BJP for you, it's about special status for Amra. So if, Chandra, if Narendra Modi is 25 MPs short, Jagan Mohan Reddy is 25, you will tell Narendra Modi, please sign the special status document, I'm supporting you. Absolutely. Am I clear? Yeah, absolutely. And if, if the Congress is in the same position, the same uh, uh, conditions apply. It's even Rajdeep said he's also in the same position, same conditions. So it's not true that this is some pre-poll deal with Narendra Modi. There is. No you deal. and KCR are in a pre-poll deal with Narendra Modi. Between the two, uh, uh, Telangana and Andhra, 42 MPs. You get 35 tomorrow, the two of you. Mr. Modi is short of 35. You in, fact, in fact, here, one, one thing I should suggest, I should say that. 
I'm thankful to KCR. I should say that. Good. Even though he's not from our state. Mm -hmm. Even though he's not from our native state. He went one step ahead. And he pledged his support for special category status. He said, I will support Andhra Pradesh in getting special category status. And he made this statement openly in the media, in press conference, in front of the whole media. But how will you then respond to the critics who will say, what about Mr. Modi's ideology? The fact is your party has a strong minority vote in Andhra Pradesh. Post election, if you tie up with Narendra Modi, do you see that vote leaving? Do you see those to be issues? Or for you, the only issue now is special status for Andhra. Nothing else matters. See, for us, as far as we are concerned, we have no tie up with anybody. We don't have a tie up. We don't have a tie up with BJP. We don't have a tie up with Congress. We don't have a tie up with anybody. As far as we are concerned, we are thankful to KCRG for uh, the, the, the TRS party for having pledged their support to us for special category status. And we are thankful to that. So the ideology of the BJP does not matter. Hindutva ideology, none of that matters. Because we become 25. Plus another 17 of uh, Telangana also added to us. Mm. So we become a big channel for 42 MPs demanding special category. So ideology is not the issue. Hindutva is not the issue in this election. For you in Andhra, it's special category status. We do not know who would come at Delhi, who would come to power in Delhi. I do not know who would come into Delhi. Whomsoever God destines will come to power in Delhi. And whomsoever comes into power in Delhi, mm -hmm. all what I request from them is they yield to the very word what they are given in the in the parliament. Therefore, Chandra Babu Naidu is also saying the same thing. He's also saying, I want special category status. I've been betrayed by Narendra Modi. And this election, he's also going to the people of Andhra saying, give me chief ministership. I will continue to fight Delhi for special category status. How are you different to him? I tell you that, I think. See, how do you justify some of these actions when somebody is in the central government. His MPs are also part of the ministry, central ministry. And for four years, they rule the state, they rule central. For four years, out of five year regime, four years they are together. His MPs are part of central government. In these four years, the central ministers of the Revolution Party have been part of n number of cabinet decisions. Yet, they never raised this topic of special category status. The worst part is, four years, they stick together. They travel together. In fact, Chandra Bobo and I do ridiculed special category status. In fact, on uh, uh, 2017, 2017, September 8th, mm -hmm. when Arun Jaitley ji made a statement in the midnight, uh, removing special category status and instead replacing it with special package. Chandra Babu Naidu's ministers were right beside him when Arun Jatliji made the statement. And on the same midnight, mm -hmm. Chandra Babu Naidu thanked the central government for mm -hmm. yielding so. And the next day in the assembly, Chandra Babu Naidu passed a resolution in the assembly thanking BJP for what BJP has done. And it, and it just did not stop there. And when we and we were there in the assembly, voicing out against BJP, voicing out against against the Telugu Party in the assembly, and he ridiculed and he said, and he ridiculed special category status, saying, "What good did the special category status do to Himachal Pradesh or Uttarakhand?" He made those categorical statements, and then it did, it just did not stop there. Then, come 1st uh, January 2017, uh, 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 January 27th, that is precise date, yeah. January 27, 2018, that is four months after Arun Jaitley ji gave, their, gave that package announcement, January 27, 2018, mm. this man, Chandra Gopanayi, conducted a press meet and said, what BJP has done for the state of Andhra Pradesh, history has never seen something like this. 
he, he praised BJP and he said what BJP has done for the state of Andhra Pradesh, it has done for no other state. He praised BJP. So, so you're saying he's shifted the goalposts, he's guilty of double standards. He on the other hand says, Jagan Mohan Reddy to use his words, the, the Telugu translation is a rowdy. You know, even the other day when your uncle was shot dead, he accused you of murder. Says if Jagan Mohan Reddy comes to power in Andhra, crime will once again rise. You are dealing with someone who's a, a businessman first, not a politician. Someone who's going to make money out of Andhra Pradesh. These are the serious accusations he makes on the campaign trail. See, see being a rival party, that is what he will speak of. But the very fact is, you now coming to this point of my uncle's death, it is, I mean, he's my uncle. He passed him. He was killed brutally in his, in, in, in his own house. And the enquiry being conducted is none other than Chandra Gopinayu's own police force. My uncle gets killed by the Telugu Desham Party himself, by the Telugu Desham Party, by Chandra Gopinayu himself. He conducts an enquiry by his own police force. He twists the matters thanks to the support of this yellow media that he, he controls and I go demand for a CBI inquiry. I go demand for any inquiry what does not involve Chandrababu Naidu in the picture. If, and, and, yet, and yet this man says no. If you come to power, will you uh, uh, inquire into Chandrababu Naidu? We will definitely conduct an inquiry. We will definitely make sure that the culprits are brought to prison. No, if, will you in, inquire into a Chandra Babu Naidu, uh, the allegation that you keep making about him today, about misusing his position, about disproportionate assets? Because we've seen this in Tamil Nadu. When governments change, whoever comes to power tries to fix his rival. Now you tell you me claim what? that Chandra Babu Naidu has tried to fix you over these years. Are you going to try and fix him if you come to power? You tell me what I'm supposed to do, right? Yeah. See, a, a person is caught red-handed. Audio taped and video taped. Distributing black money, unaccounted for money, course of duties, to buy MLAs. In fact, you yourself have liked, you yourself have telecasted the whole episode where Chandra Babu Naidu is caught, audio taped, video taped, distributing black money to buy MLAs. I just ask you one thing. How is it that a chief minister caught with the black money is let is let is let I mean is let to go? How is it that the chief minister was caught with black money, audio taped and video taped, does not have to resign, is not disqualified, does is not sent to prison? It's interesting no. you're raising these questions because also raising the same question has been KCR. And you've said earlier in this interview today that KCR is fully supporting you on special status. Am I to understand that Jagat Mohan Reddy, KCR, a Saudi Novesi, are in some kind of pre-poll alliance? These 42 seats of Andhra, in a sense, which you are saying will be crucial. See, the fact is, are you in alliance with KCR? Is he a well-wisher? How do you see him? Is this an alliance? Can I call it a pre-poll alliance? See, the fact is, there is no alliance as such, but there is. Common interest? There is a common interest, yes, definitely. There is, he is a well-wisher, definitely. Asadin OIC is also a good friend of mine, he is also a well-wisher, definitely. See, what we want at the national level is somebody to hear to us, somebody to listen to us. See, you gave a word on the floor of the house, and if you do not honor that very word given on the floor of the parliament, then where is, where, where is democracy landing? So I'm going to ask you the same question I asked KCR before the Telangana election. Who is to you the better person for you to deal with? The Congress under Rahul Gandhi, BJP under Narendra Modi. Who would you prefer to deal with? You're going to have to make a choice at some stage. See, as far as we are concerned, we are good with anybody who signs special categories. Status plan. You don't want to choose, you don't want to make a choice. Well, that is what God to decide how can I decide the numbers. Whosoever gets those numbers and those numbers should fall short. That is also God's grace. But I pray to God that these numbers don't fully go one way. You want the hung parliament? I want the hung parliament, definitely. 
You are making an important point. You are saying you want to hang parliament. Actually, the other way, you know, the very word what was given on the floor of the house in the parliament is mocked, is ridiculed. Then, I mean, if, if if somebody gives a word in the parliament, both both the opposition as well as the ruling party come together, break the state with a precondition that they would give special category status, and after doing so, make a mockery of that very word. Given in the parliament. So you are making you want a hung parliament where the regional parties decide. You, KCR, Naveen Patnaik, Mamta Banerjee, this so-called federal front that KCR keeps talking about. That's your first preferred option. You think that will give states greater autonomy, greater power over the center? I would definitely want a situation like that. There is nothing wrong in me wanting to see a situation like that because I've been betrayed. My state has been betrayed. My state has been cheated. Let me then ask you in conclusion. I think you've been very honest and said that you want a hung assembly, a hung parliament, so that you have greater leverage over the centre. In all these ten years, how has Jagan Mohan Reddy changed? How have you changed? You know, ten years ago, you were a businessman. Today, you are trying to become the Chief Minister of Andhra. What's the biggest learning for you in these 10 years? How have you changed as a person? So basically, 10 years back, I was not in politics. I was neither in AP, I was neither in Andhra. Mm. When I am not in politics, my duty to my family is to become a businessman. And uh, even before my father was the Chief Minister of Andhra, I was still a businessman in Karnataka. I had a 40 megawatt hydropower. In, in Karnataka. So I was doing my I was doing justice to my family. But after my after my coming into politics, after my father passing away, things changed. I am now no longer a businessman. In the past ten years, if one were to see my track record, one would see me most of the while in people. You know, I you you were you were a good eater. One thing that politics has done is made you eat less. I mean, what's happening? You barely touch that. You've got the best, uh, this chutney that you only make in Hyderabad. This classic chutney. So you're not going to eat much. And you've got a long day on the election trip. You know, you're, how do you unwind? How does, how does Jagan Mohan Reddy unwind? Do you get time with the family at all now? Yeah, but my family has been very uh, understanding, I should say that. And thank you. I'm thankful for that. Because your mother, sister, wife, everyone in a way has campaigned. My, they, they, they just started campaigning. In fact, but my wife is told in my, in my constituency. She's not going to that part. Uh, my mother and my sister were also told in the They started yesterday. They didn't yesterday. So it's a family party. Your critics will say it's all in the family. See, they have just, see, see even if you are contesting, uh, your family would definitely. You know, go on campaign. Sure. But and, and, and the fact that these people have camp started campaigning 12 days before the election, how does it classify that act as a family party? Because you'll control all the main force. See, they, it's the YSR they, Congress. No, they are, she, see, my mother is an honorary mom. Um, she is the honorary president of uh, YSR Congress party. And my sister is not a And uh, none of them are, both of them, none of them contesting elections. I think this is, uh, uh, and yet if you still insist in saying it's a family party that I think so. This coffee, by the way, is to die for. Jagan Mohan Reddy makes the most, his house makes the best coffee you can get. Classic South Indian coffee. So how do you unwind, as I asked you? When you're 24 by 7 into politics, how do you unwind? You were into sport, you were a you know, good athlete, I'm told, in Hyderabad Public School, your old uh, colleagues tell me, so how, how do you unwind? How do you relax? Or is politics relaxation now? I guess uh, you need to find your own ways to do and get them. And uh, to me, probably, when I come home, uh, spending time with the family is probably best. You know, one question I forgot to ask. There's an X factor in Andhra, Pavan Kalyan. Do you see him as an X factor, the Jan Sena? That the Jan Sena could change this election, that they could divide the Chandrababu Naidu vote. Is Pawan Kalyan a factor? Is he in tacit alliance with Chandrababu Naidu? See, as far as this uh, Pawan Kalyan, 
he got his cancer. See, he was in the previous elections with the Liberation Party. He campaigned for TPP's victory. And uh, four out of five years, he was literally with uh, four and a half years out of five years, he was literally with the Liberation Party. And just six months before the elections, he chose to give an act that he broke away from the Liberation Party. But whatever said and done, for somebody who campaigned with the Teleguidation Party in Chandrababu Naidu, who played an instrumental role in bringing him to, and bringing Chandrababu Naidu into power, then who actually went along and stayed with him for four and a half years in power. Such kind of a person who definitely also should also be a part of the misgovernance of Chandrababu Naidu. How can you say that I'm not connected? It's not possible. And now, I presume that this is a whole act to just split that anti-incumbency vote or what they think could be done. So there is a tacit alliance, you think? I strongly believe, because you know, Pawan Kalyan uh, filed this nomination the other day. And uh, Telugu Desham Party flags were there in his nominations. I mean, and he never even countered that. Can you believe something like that could happen? There is one other X factor in your state, and it's called cash. Everybody says Andhra Pradesh is the state which you win whoever has the maximum cash. Can you match? You was a Chandrababu Naidu, is that an even contest? See, I don't think cash would uh, really play that kind of an important role. The reason being the anti incumbency factor would be so dominant that you know, Chandrababu Naidu, because of his misgovernment, his corrupt practices, this corrupt money, he would try to definitely corrupt people give him a little dollar to piece a note. But then the hope would drive people to vote against Chandra. You're not giving cash. Every Andhra politician has to do it. It's the worst kept secret. See, basically, you know, there is no way we could give, we could mobilize in a, even a fraction of what Chandra could give. The reason is because, you know, when an election comes, we also ask people. We also ask for donations. We also ask people for donations. And we try to field uh, the best possible wealthy candidates whom we can find. But that is our limitation. It doesn't. You are in the sense. opposition. Much more difficult to raise cash possibly when you are in the opposition than the government. But, but because, you know, you, because, you, because people are very scared to give it to you. When only they see a strong uh, current against this government. BJP not offering you cash? <laughs> No, no cash being offered by the BJP no. saying support us after the election, Neither we'll give you cash now. Neither BJP nor Congress. Now. Okay, so you've said, no, no, no. <laughs> you've said 25 out of 25 in the Lok Sabha is your target, assembly target, 110, 120 out of 175, what are you looking at? What are your polls saying? Okay, I think uh, in God's grace, touch wood, when you have your own uh, surveys, that periodically you get to make use of uh, issues. Those numbers come true. Well, I'll tell you, whatever the numbers are, I give 10 out of 10 for your coffee. You've got to tell me next time where to get this coffee powder because this is the kind of coffee. That's why South India is perhaps a better place to be than the North. And you're hoping that it will play a role in post elections, right? The Janet Mohan Reddy KCR factor, big, in a sense, uh, news point given by Jagat Mohan Reddy that he hopes for a hung parliament in which he and the likes of KCR will play a major role in Indian politics. Thanks very much for the coffee, the upma, the chutney and uh, for being such a kind host. Next time, maybe we'll have to go to Amravati, the new capital of Andhra, if you become the chief minister. You'll presumably base yourself there, not in Hyderabad. You'll have to leave Hyderabad or Amravati. You're going to keep the Amravati dream going? Chandrababu's new dream going. You'll still build it a world class city like Singapore. That's what he wants. The capital definitely would have to come. And definitely, capital would have to come. Capital factors uh, like the as far as Chandrababu Naidu's uh, governance is concerned. What do you see in the capital? There is not one brick laid. What he can speak of is what he can speak to say as a 
permanent destruction. Everything there is temporary. temporary. But he says it's going to be permanent. Temporary, yes. He says it's going to be permanent. He, yeah. he is a bit of a builder. You can't deny that. He, he says he built Hyderabad. And he's going to build Amravati. He, neither did he build Hyderabad. And where if you were to see the development would took place. I can give you the numbers comparing that switching with Chandrababu Naidu switching. Mm -hmm. Well, everything in Chandrababu Naidu's regime was way lower when compared to what that could achieve. So neither did he build Hyderabad, and neither is he building a uh, world-class capital there. For somebody who was in power for five years, for somebody who was drawn in the name of the capital, 2,500 crores from central government city, in the name of building a capital, has built nothing there, not even a single permanent structure, not even a single permanent brick. Everything there is temporary. So much so that when it rains three centimeters, you would actually find six centimeters of water in the buildings there. I thought Andhraians were the best contractors in India. You construct the best dam, the best buildings. But thanks to Chandra Bhavan, he's corrupted the whole system. Okay. You've got a long road ahead of you, uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy. If you are to be the Chief Minister of Andhra, it's a state that will need plenty of effort in the next few years. We'll see who wins, Chandra Babu or Jagan Mohan Reddy. Thank you very much. Jagan Mohan Reddy could be Andhra's man of the moment. Thanks for watching as I focus on my coffee.